Last week, uh, I started the message, uh, Mountain Moving First. Mountain Moving First. It's, it's a faith that moves mountains. Amen? Amen. Mountain Moving First. It's God's divine agenda. Now, Mountain Moving First is not just some technology. It is so biblical. Because Jesus said that in Mark 11, 23, he said, uh, uh, I say unto you, whosoever saith unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. So the condition is, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So you cannot have what you don't say. So right there, that is what we call the mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith. For verily I say unto you that, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. The, 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 the greatest condition there is shall not doubt in his heart. Shall not do what? Shall not doubt that, that's the pivotal, that's the place that everything happens. Man. Doubt, doubt is, uh, is very destructive in the presence of God. Doubt is, uh, they are all in the same family as unbelief. Because God does not work where there is no believing. If people are not believing God, nothing happens. That's what the Bible says, it's impossible to please God without faith. We have come here by faith. Do we see God? No. But how do we know God is with us? By faith. Okay, Jesus lives in my life. How? By faith. So everything functions or thrives around faith. So Jesus one time went into a city, Mark chapter 6. The Bible says, imagine the Son of God goes in a city and he could not do any mighty miracle there. And because of one reason, one reason. Let's go to Mark uh, 6 verse 1 coming down. He says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many hearing were astonished, saying, From whence are this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto you? They were confused about Jesus' wisdom. That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Verse 3. The Bible says, is, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And they are not, and they are not his sisters here with us. And they were offended at him. Verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but his own country, and among his own king, and in his own house. Verse 5, it says, And he could there do no might work, save that he laid his hands upon few sick people, few sick folk, and he married few sick folk, and he healed them. Verse 6, this, And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. Unbelief, doubts, they are the major reason why God can't move in our midst. Unbelief, unbelief. And I'm going to break down this stuff so you understand. Unbelief and doubt in your heart. When you doubt in your heart, God sees that in your heart. Amen. Now, when we go into Hebrews 11:6. The Bible says that he could not do no mighty miracle because of unbelief. I want to believe God in my life. I don't want to believe. I want to believe God for everything. Amen. I want to believe God. I don't like. I don't. I don't care how things look like, but I just want to believe God for all things. Uh, Hebrews eleven six. The Bible says, uh, but without faith, it is what. It is impossible. Now, the word impossible there is, is, is there's no chance. So it's impossible to please God without faith. 
You may not be a prayer warrior, but uh, you still please God if you've got faith. Because faith is the center of everything. We are born again by faith. We come to know Jesus by faith. We live by faith. We are healed by faith. We are protected by faith. Everything revolves around faith. That's why it is impossible to please God without faith. And the Bible says, and he that comes to God must believe. Even before you come before God, you must believe. You must believe that God is. Now, what that God is means there is that uh, if you just believe in the existence of God, even before he does anything, just believe that God is. He is. He is my healer. He is my provider. He is my restorer. He can do all that I'm trusting him to do. We just gonna believe God's existence. And it says, and he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek his face. Amen. Mountain moving first. So we looked at many things. Uh, how Jesus kissed the tree and the tree dried up the, the following day. And the Peter remember to say, the tree which thou cursed us yesterday has dried up. And then Jesus began now, he began to say in uh, uh, Mark 11, 22, he began to say that uh, have faith in God. The word have faith in God there is the God kind of faith. Now let's go to Mark chapter 11 verse, verse 22. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Mark, Mark chapter 11, 22. And Jesus answering, saying, says unto them, have faith in God. When you go in the Greek rendering, that word is very big. Have faith in God is, is have the God kind of faith. The same faith that God has, have it in you. As a matter of fact, you know, uh, the faith that you have is not your faith. It was put inside you by God himself. I'm hearing the word. So, uh, you must have the God kind of faith. And what does the God kind of faith do? It believes and it speaks. It believes and it speaks. So we need to have the God kind of faith. Now I believe all of us here, we got the God kind of faith. Every one of us were born again, isn't it? We've come. So, so what happens is that when anybody comes to Jesus, there's a deposit of faith in your spirit. The Lord deposits faith in your spirit at salvation. And the Holy Spirit also comes in at salvation. As a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit is a mark of ownership that you and me, we belong to God. So, but the, the, the faith that is deposited in your life when you give your life to Jesus, it's just a seed form. It is, it is designed to grow. So that's why you discover we have different levels of faith. But we have all been given a seed of faith. So what you do with that seed of faith determines how your faith becomes. No wonder you remember any time there was a problem among Jesus and, and, his, and his disciples. You remember how Peter doubted walking on water. He walked very well. But down the way he doubted. What did Jesus say? He says, all of little faith. So Jesus is describing his faith as being little. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? When she touched Jesus and she got the healing? You remember what happened? Jesus says, I've never seen a woman with faith like this lady. So faith is in dimensions. So when you see somebody's got bigger faith, it's because there is something they are doing. Faith does not grow because it has to grow. There is always what to do. And we do understand faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, so what you do with that seed of faith in your life determines how strong your faith becomes. Your faith has to grow. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. 
Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, he said, your faith grow, grows exceedingly. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. I'm pretty sure. It says, uh, uh, if it's not first, I shouldn't keep on forgetting, isn't it? <laughs> it should be second Thessalonians. It must be second Thessalonians. Thank you, Jesus. Second Thessalonians. You see, I'll just go straight on it. It says, you brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith gloweth exceedingly. So your faith has to grow every time. Remember, we, we, we have battles. We fight by faith. We fight believing God. But now, faith does not come in your life because it has to. It is basically feeding your spirit with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Even just like you are hearing the word, faith is coming in your spirit, isn't it? So, we, we are in such a place. Anybody who is born again, you have faith in your spirit as a seed. But that faith has to grow. And how does it grow? By studying the word every day, every moment. When you study the word of God, you begin to meditate upon the word. And then your faith will begin to change levels. It has to. It will keep on changing levels. Because everything answered to faith. Everything they are delivered to you according to your faith. Life answers to you according to your faith. There are people who believe that uh, this year, I think it, it's just going to be the same way it should be last year. Uh, and God does not argue you. What you believe is what God is going to do for you. But if you stand up and say, Lord, I believe your word, I, I think before the end of this year, I'm going to see some things I've never seen in my life. And God is going to respond to you according to your faith. Matthew chapter 9 verse 27. I'm pretty sure it's verse 20. I didn't prepare the scriptures this. The Lord is just giving them to me. <laughs> Matthew chapter 9 27. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live. Now the Bible says and when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying thou son of David have mercy on us. Verse 28. The Bible, and when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I'm able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord, we believe. Verse 29. What did Jesus say? He said, Then Jesus touched he their eyes, and they said, According to your faith. So life delivered delivers according to your faith. He didn't say according to my anointing. He said, According if you believe it. It's going to happen. So he said, then he touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So it is to you according to your faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. There are people who believe I shall not die before my time. They keep on declaring and speaking. I shall not be sick another day in my life. It is according to your faith. He said, I shall not be broke another day in my life. Why? You are declaring what you believe. It is according to your faith. I'm not the tail, but the head. You know what I'm saying? You are believing, you are declaring what you believe. Yes. You remember uh, when we go into uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says, we having the same spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Thank you. We having what? The same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Faith is a spirit. There's what we call word of faith, 
There's also what we call the spirit of faith. What is word of faith? When faith, word of faith is the one that comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But when, when the word of faith becomes part of you, you don't need to think it to speak it. It is already in your spirit. I've never said in any day that I'll be broke in my life. I've never said I'll die before my time. I don't say those things because it, my spirit man is, that word of faith is now in spirit form. So I don't, I don't think to say, it. it's just embedded in my spirit. How many of you, you have driven to your house, you don't even know how you got there. You are driving like, you, you know, you know, you, you are obeying the rules. But you are, you are just laid consciously like, like uh, you don't even know how I arrived. Maybe you are busy talking to somebody, but you are driving. You didn't think, you, you just end up at your house. Why? It's because when something has been so much deposited, when the place, when you know where you've been always driving, it's no longer you thinking to get there. It's already in you. You just do it automatically. So it's the same thing with the Word of God. When the Word of God is inside in you, it becomes a spirit form. You don't have to think it. It's just automatically flowing. Somebody curses you, you say, no, you can't curse me. I cannot die before my time. Why? Because it's, it's there as a spirit form. That's what the Bible says. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore I speak. I don't have to think it to speak it. It's just like you are cooking food and all of a sudden you touch the stove. What happens? You remove before you think. You remove your hand or you do like this. Why? Because it, it, it's now no longer something you need to think. It's something that is now spirit form. There are things you cannot just say because they are not part of what is in the word of God. Are we hearing the word? So we having the same spirit of faith, we believe therefore we speak. Thank you, Jesus. So now, last week we spoke about what is faith. We talked about the substance of things all for the angels of things not seen. And then we said faith is acting upon the living word of God uh, to prove God's integrity. We said faith is taking God's word, God at his word. To prove his integrity. We spoke about faith is total submission to God's will, instructions, and voice. I remember that. So today we're going to look at uh, uh, how do you generate mountain moving faith? How, how do you, how, how many want to have faith where what you declare comes to pass? Yeah. Because you know, faith is not an assumption. If you've got it, you've got it. That's what it is. Faith. Because you don't know what faith can do. Faith can trigger, can trigger, it triggers the hand of God on your life. Sometimes we, we reason so much to say, ah, just faith. No, faith is big in the presence of God. Just faith itself, just faith. Faith can preserve you from robbers. Faith can preserve you from sickness and disease. Faith can preserve you from recession of the economy. Faith can preserve you from going down to hell. Faith can preserve you from premature death. Faith can preserve you from, from uh, breaking down. Faith can preserve you from anything. Why? Because faith is a weapon. It's a weapon of dominion. We use it to fight. And the faith, it commands the attention of God. You remember how Jesus was headed unto Jairus. Remember Jairus? Jairus' daughter was sick. And Jesus was going towards Jairus' daughter. And all of a sudden, a woman came from nowhere, a woman with the issue of blood, and interrupted Jesus. Jesus forgot. I'm, I'm supposed to go to Jairus' daughter, but faith will command the attention of God. Jesus, though he was headed to somebody's house, he had no, he had no option but to look unto the woman because her faith was so dangerous. You remember how the woman began to say that if I may but touch the garment of the Son of God, I shall be made whole. And she made such a decision. And Jesus will never disperse people with faith like that. 
He may be very busy in heaven, but he's going to show up in your life. So faith is going to command the attention of God. So now, we have to know how do I generate the mountain moving faith? Because everything we need is going to come through by faith. We do it by God's word. Romans 10, 17. The word of God. When you are feeding upon the word, when you are studying the word, sometimes I encourage you as a family, you, you get around the word of God. You start the word. If what you don't understand, skip it. Whatever you can grab, it's okay. Because we can't finish the whole Bible. It's too much. So what you are able to understand. See, what is important is to cultivate an attitude. You cultivate a behavior. When a behavior is cultivated, it becomes a system. When a system is cultivated, it, becomes, it brings total transformation. So in the morning, I know it's very hard. In the evening, anytime, 10 minutes. You don't have to do it one hour. Just 10 minutes, but consistently. 10 minutes, Lord, I thank you. This is what I do. Lord, blessed Jesus, I love you so very much. I open the word of God. Lord, I thank you. Holy Ghost, teach me what you want me to know. I love your word. I believe your word. I honor your word. You speak those words, you open the Bible. Opening the Bible is opening your destiny. You are opening your life to greatness. That's what it simply means. You remember in the book of Revelation, when the book of, was crossed, remember the book was crossed? And the angel wept to say, who is worthy to open the book? And the Bible says Jesus was found worthy to open the book. Now this book has been opened. Why? Because you can't shine in your life except by this book. This book has got everything we need. I may not have an answer as a man of God, but this thing is got an answer for you. The word of God is ultimate. It's perfect law of liberty. It has everything we need. It has every solution. Amen. The word of God. Sometimes I feel low in my spirit. I feel low. And low. What can I do? I go into the word. All of a sudden, something begins to up my spirit. Amen. So the Romans. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word. So if I need the faith to come, I must hear this. The word. How do you hear the word? Anytime you open up the word of God. The word of God is the voice of God. God will definitely speak to you. You may read five chapters and nothing is happening. Maybe the sixth chapter, God will speak to you. His voice is on the word of God. His voice changes your faith. His voice changes your life. The other day, last week I was praying, 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 praying. Then I heard the Lord say, I'm well pleased with you, my son. That voice changed me like I was. This is all. Sometimes that voice comes from the word of God. So we keep on reading the word. Speak to me, O oh God. We keep on reading the word. So faith comes by hearing. So the faith where you can generate the mountain moving faith it is by hearing and hearing the word of God. The second one is the Holy Spirit of God. See, the Holy Ghost is not windy. It's not a force. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Ghost speaks. The Holy Ghost, He is there for us. When Jesus went back to heaven, He said, I'm going to send you somebody. Unless I go, the Holy Ghost is not going to come. So when Jesus went out there, the Holy Ghost is here on earth. In a believer, in somebody who has given his life to Jesus. Now, we don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you know the reason why we're going to go to heaven? The, the, the reason why I know you are going to heaven, you are going to heaven. There is a witness in your spirit. The Holy Spirit is the witness that we are going to heaven. The Holy Spirit is the witness that you are a child of God. That's why it's easier to know that you are going to heaven. The Holy Spirit is going to give you a witness in your spirit. That is his job. Romans 8 verse 15 and 16. The Holy Ghost. But sometimes the Spirit of God can be, can be, the Bible says it can be quenched. The way to quench is it can be put off in your life. Sometimes it can be grieved. 
So we have to be very careful how we relate with the Spirit of God. Because my life to move forward, I need the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, uh, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. That spirit is the Holy Spirit. Verse 16. And the Bible says, um, What does 16 say? Um, I suspect. The spirit itself bears with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. So there's a bearing in your spirit that you are a child of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is there. So you, you cannot generate the mountain moving faith without the Holy Spirit. No one here has got the capacity to generate the mountain moving faith without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. How many of you have got a relationship with the Holy Ghost? Amen. We need the Spirit of God. A lot. A lot. Sometimes I, I talk to him very much. I talk to him very much. I love him. See, you know, when Jesus was in the grave, you remember when Jesus was in the grave? The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the one that shook him, shook the grave. And the, the Son of God came out of the grave. Romans 8 verse 7, you don't have to go there. So we need the Holy Spirit in order to generate mountain moving faith. And the other uh, third way how to generate uh, the mountain moving faith is obedience to God's voice. Whatever God speaks to you, you obey. Amen. Because everything is about the voice of God. When God speaks to you, God, I need to obey. Many times the Lord has spoken to me many words. And, if, and when you obey God's voice, it shows that you believe God. If you don't believe Him, uh -huh, if you don't believe Him, you don't obey His voice. You know. You remember uh, Moses, uh, sorry, uh, Abraham was told by God, get up. Moses, Abraham, go and give your child on the mountain, uh, Isaac. And the Bible says, early in the morning, that was total obedience. Never questioning God. He stood up. He woke up early. The Bible mentions early in the morning. He went on to Mount Moriah. He just wanted to do what God just told him to do. Sometimes what God does is going to instruct you to do something. He just want to say, can you obey him? Can you obey him? And when, once God say, sees that you are able to obey him, I mean, he moves. God supernaturally moves. You remember the Bible says, an angel called out from heaven a second time to Abraham and said, Abraham, I now know that you fear me. And God began to declare blessings on his life. Genesis 22 verse 17. Obedience is a sign it's one of the ways you can develop a mountain moving faith. Sometimes obedience is not easy. But one thing I know, God has given us the grace to obey Him. There is grace for obedience. Amen. Now, because you can't obey God in your own flesh, in your own natural energy, it's practically impossible. It is the grace. He has already supplied the grace for obedience. Uh, uh, the Bible says in verse uh, 15 maybe, it says, uh, um, this, uh, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time verse 16 and, uh, and said by myself have I son says the Lord for because thou hast done this thing there's one thing you do that God swears upon himself he says because you have done this one thing and you have not withheld your son thine own son verse 17 hear what God will do now he says, uh, verse 17, and then he says uh, that in blessing, I'll bless you, and in multiplying, I'm going to multiply that seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. That is dominion. The voice of God, whatever God speaks to you in any words, it may look uh, irrelevant, but obedience to the voice of God gives you access to mountain-moving faith. 
I've been telling God, I want to I wanna obey you, O oh God. Whatever you are sending me to do, I want to do it for you, O oh God. And then he also, how to generate mountain moving faith. Uh, this, the, 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 the fourth one is uh, meditation upon God's word. Meditation. To think upon the word. You are meditating upon the word of God. Meditation. To think. Because what meditation does is it drives the word of God from your mind into your spirit. Whatever you think about becomes part of you. So meditating on the word of God daily, the just shall live by faith. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. You are meditating upon the word of God. Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. And I'll go to and then we'll be, we'll be closing and having our Holy Communion. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but is delight. Hey, the law there is the word of God. The law is basically God's word. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law, it doeth, in this law, doeth he meditate day and night. Imagine you are meditating on the word. The Bible says, and he shall be like what? A tree planted by what? By the rivers of water. So if you want your life to be like a tree, but you can tell the difference. The tree by the rivers of water and the tree in the desert. You can see how different they are. But which one do you want? I want the one by the rivers of water. Because the Bible says that it bringeth forth its fruit in what? In a season. Hey! So, uh, harvest is a guarantee. Uh -huh. There's a guarantee to harvest what God has got for you and me. The Bible says, No mind, uh, 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 no high has seen, and no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived uh, those things uh, which God has prepared for them that do what? Uh, love Him. There are things I don't even know about which God has prepared for you and me. But as soon as we begin to allow meditation, upon the word. You know what happens? We are going to be like the river, but we're going to be like the tree by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Withering is counsel in the spirit. When you meditate on the word of God, and uh, whatsoever he doeth, hey, shall prosper. Whatever you do, so that's a mystery. That's it. Whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to do in your life, if you start your business, you'll prosper. If you start a family, your family will prosper. If you are doing a job, you are doing this, everything you're doing, you're going to prosper. That's what the Word of God says. So, whatsoever He doeth shall prosper. So, meditation upon the Word of God is one of the keys. It will generate faith. And then, number five, seeking God's face. When you're seeking the face of God. Now, seeking the face of God is so important in life. And that's the reason we are living for. The Bible says, uh, God is the rewarder of them that diligently do what? Seek Him. You can't seek God's face and God never rewards you. There are times I want to go sleep. I just love God so much. Like, Lord, I just love you so very much. I don't need nothing from you. All I need is to express my love for you. I love you so very much. Amen. So, seeking God's face is going to generate the mountain moving faith. Whatever you speak, you become an authority. Whatever you declare, Every situation hears the voice of God in you. 
You become the carrier of the authority of God. Nothing stands against you. Whatever you declare comes to pass with immediate effect. That's what it is. So seeking the face of God, uh, when we go to uh, Psalm 63, starting from verse, verse 1, and I got the last one, and then we're going to be declaring and having communion. The mountain moving faith. Thank you, Jesus. How many want to God to use you? God, you want God to use you in your life? Yeah, these are the gateways. God is going to use you. God is going to bless everything about you. And God is going to bring you into a plan He has, he has for you. And no devil has got power to stop it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, thou art my God. Any will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longing for you. Even your flesh is longing everything about you. No wonder the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all what? Your mind, your soul, your spirit, and your strength. And then it says, for thee in a dry and thirst land where no water is. And then verse 8, I think so, when we go to verse 8. Oh, Jesus. My soul falls hard after you. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Just imagine, your soul is following God so hard. Like I'm following you, oh God. Wherever you are, I want to be there. Amen. And this is the place where God wants us to come to. Many times when I'm spending time in the, the presence of God, because I'm a lover of God's praises. I love the praises. What we need in life is the praises more than anything. The praises of God Almighty. Do you know, you, you can, people can carry, people can move, see the difference between power and praises. Power is for people that want power to show themselves off. Power is so much for what you can get from God. People are fasting for power so that they can see miracles and breakthroughs. But the presence has got to do with fellowship with God. I love you so very much, Lord. I need you more than I need nothing. And as a matter of fact, when you got the presence, you're going to operate in the power of God. But the presence does not... for us. So it's that love you have for God that now generates the praises. And the praises of God is going to usher you into a dimension of faith where nothing can stand against you. Nothing. Nothing can stand against you. And then the last thing is uh, faith for God and His praises. This is how you generate the, 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 the mountain moving first. <laughs> Fasting for God and His praises. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -oh. I'm too close. <laughs> so she says you stay there. Amen. Amen. Faith for God and His praises. I may know that Jesus is coming back. Amen. The Lord is coming back. He's coming back and uh, I, I can see that day. And we want to we wanna be caught up with the Son of God. Amen. And, and, the, and the truth is this. Uh, this is what I've told people all the times. Even if we got 100 years to live more, the truth is that one day, 
We're going to stand before the throne of God. Oh, yes. That's why uh, I've concluded in my life to say that uh, it's very important to always make sure I understand the will of God over your life. Because you see, the reason why me and you were able to see this day, even today, it is because God wants us to worship Him. He wants us to give Him reverence and honor every day. And that's the reason why. We serve a wonder-working God. Our God is gigantic. We're never going to comprehend Him. My wife was reading something powerful for me. I love to, to see. see. See, God is not a human being. It, God is Jehovah El Shaddai. In his level, there's no one like him. No wonder he says, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. As far as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways high above your words. Jehovah El Shaddai. Did you know that uh, I was reading, my wife was reading something very powerful. I like the, the, the scientific researchers. The, the way I was saying that, uh, it will take a car traveling 160 kilometers per hour. It will take a car 29 million years to reach the nearest star. Now, you remember what we did? 29 million years to reach the nearest star. A car traveling at 160 kilometers per hour. So I sat down and said, we don't know you, oh God. We don't know God. And I can, I can assure you, I've told everybody, I can preach like this, but we don't know God. God is so sovereign, He's so sovereign that no one will ever comprehend Him. Imagine, imagine, 29 million years. And not only that, I also discovered something very powerful. That, you know the Air France, the airplane, traveling at 900 kilometers per hour, there's one star, to cross from one end to the other end, it, it will take 1,200 years. So I sat and I said, do I know you, oh God? Because we, we just think God is one of the politicians and he's just one of the, you know. But Jehovah El Shaddai, he remains God. He just watches from heaven. Do these people really know me? I'm so blessed God. So we need to come back to that place where we can start acknowledging the sovereignty of God over our lives. Amen. Amen. And I know that Jesus has a plan for us and a purpose for us. My love, uh, we can give the, the, the Abrahams and they we can have. And I'm going to start praying and declaring over our lives. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name in praise. You are great, you do miracles so great. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're gonna give you the mic next time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. God loves you, God's people. Uh, many years ago, I was uh, doing a, a miracle conference, a miracle crusade in, uh, in Sri Lanka. As I was ministering, I heard the voice of God and told I'm about to do miracles here. And uh, there's a young boy who was born blind. As I was laying hands on his eyes, I felt a shifting in his eyes. I said something supernatural has moved. And then he, that's how his eyes were opened on the spot. And then his sister came to give a testimony. Now the reason why I'm sharing this, the, the, the distance between God's presence and the manifestation of his power is faith. That's the distance between uh, uh, what you want to see God do in your life. The distance is not like 10 kilometers. The distance is just faith. If I can believe God, all is going to be okay. Amen. Now, we're going to take communion. And uh, communion is, uh, is something very powerful. People get healed. Taking communion, things happen in the supernatural. Because it, naturally it's a natural practice. But it has a supernatural implication. 
Something's gonna move. Something can things can shift. There were times my prayers could not go through heaven, but I decided to take a communion, and something happened. You remember how when uh, uh, Paul were stranded uh, on the lake when there was uh, three days, they took communion. They took communion. Communion is, is very powerful. It's a very powerful thing. Yeah. It is basically trying to to affirm to you're trying to affirm what Jesus did on Calvary. You're trying to, to become a participant. The same thing that happened on Calvary is going to happen in my life, in my family. I'm going to put the devil outside my environment. Amen. This is what communion does. Not devil is going to kill you before your time. Because I've seen, I've seen supernatural manifestation of God alone. I've seen angels. The angel of God, the, the angel of the Lord has saved me from an accident, from, from death, some few years ago. My, I, was, I was dating my wife that time. I was, about, I was supposed to go for a date on a, on a Wednesday to date her, my wife. So I was crossing over Boca, I was living in Bokham Hills. So I was crossing over Windsor Road and I was coming from the city to do ministry. So what happened was this guy, uh, there was this guy, uh, he was an Australian guy, I was talking to him in the evening about 6 o'clock. So we are passing through, you know Windsor Road has got three lanes here and there. So we are passing through and uh, it was our time to pass through. And two cars stood there waiting for us and the other ones the other side. But here there was no car in this first lane. So there's a guy who was driving, I don't know how fast he was, if it's 80 kilometers per hour, he did not stop on the red light. Me, I was busy talking to this guy, knowing that it is our way to cross, but he did not stop. And what happened was this, I felt a force through me, a force through me to the front. And this guy was hit by the car, the other guy hit by the car, six meters away, he was bleeding and unconscious and the two ambulances came and the two police officer cars, they came. And I don't know if he's alive today. Now, that, that force that pushed me, I can tell you, I don't know how. I don't know how. So that's why I always say that uh, when we do communion, we're reenacting what happened on Calvary. It's not just like the people that just take it. Something happens in your life. In every area, you walk with God, it brings the strength, the spiritual strength in your life. Something happens. Your body is sanctified. There's a cleansing that goes on. If there's something that is wrong in your body, in your mind, whatever it is, just get off your body. That's why the power of this communion is. Now, I'm going to read this and then I'll be taking the communion and I'll do the prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm coming already tonight. Oh, is it tonight? This morning? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I love night. Now, 11 of our first Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, um, the Bible says, verse 23, the Bible says, for I have received the Lord which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often ye eat this bread and ye drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So we can just stand up and just uh, we just want to declare over this bread and then I'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. No, not now. Not now. It's okay, yeah. Father, this is Jesus. This is your body which was broken for us. We take this in remembrance of you. You hung on cover. You shed your own blood because of the love you have for us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. 
we declare and declare as we take this communion, may favor follow us. Amen. May the hand of God be established on our lives. May our enemies, oh God, be dissolved in the name of Jesus, enemies of our souls. We give you reverence and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We lift up your holy name, oh God. Thank you, Son of the living God, as we take this communion. May your name be glorified. This is the body of the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anything wrong in our bodies is flushed out in the mighty holy name of Jesus. Every weakness is flushed out in the mighty holy name of Jesus. Every misfortune is flushed out in the mighty holy name of Jesus. In the mighty holy name of the Son of God. We may take the communion through bread. All the blood of Jesus, all the blood of Jesus, Maliga and the Zoprovalevis. This is the this is this is the, the blood of the Son of God which was shed on Calvary that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Mighty God, I pray and I declare that we take this blood communion. May your name be highly exalted in our lives. Cleanse us from every unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, may your holy presence accompany us, O oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can take that. And then I want you just to lift up your hands. I'm going to pray. Prophesy over you, declare great things on your life. <coughs> just by faith. Reza Akano Suba. The Kuma Aleko no Sopras. Let's just lift our hands. Mighty God, I bless your holy name. These are your people that you have uh, that you have raised by your own self. You have, you have bought with your own price, your own blood. Mighty God, I pray, I cover them in the holy name of Jesus. I cover them in the blood. They are going out, is blessed. They are coming in, is equally blessed. They shall be blessed when they go out in the city. They shall be blessed everywhere. In the mighty holy name of Jesus. Father, I declare everlasting blessings on them. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare. Nothing shall stand their way. I declare and declare the spirit of revelation knowledge. To flow in their lives. I pray and I declare mountain moving faith. In their lives in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, I declare and declare that they shall be above only and never beneath. Protect them this week. Bless them. Increase them, Lord. Lift them higher. In the name of Jesus. Bless the weights of their hands. In the mighty holy name of Jesus. Go before them. Bless their families, oh God. I release angels of God before their direction. Nothing God will touch them. I cover them. I, I decree and I declare. May your goodness go before them. In the mighty holy name of Jesus. Amen. They shall not be the tail but the head. Amen. In the mighty holy name of Jesus. Amen. We give you reverence. We give you all the glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. I'm going to call my wife to come and release us. And thank you Lord for the word of God. Thank you Lord for your people. God bless you my love. God bless you.
overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me yes, all the days of my life. Yes, Lord. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 As church, I thought it was important for us to know what Psalm 23 was today. I now leave you with a priestly blessing found in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Yes, Lord. The Lord turn his face towards you yes, and give you peace. Yes, Let's pray. Yes, Dearly Father, I thank you that you have been with us today. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you've been with us in spirit and in word. Yes, Lord. Lord, you never leave us and we are so grateful for that. Yes, Lord. Thank you for reminding us that you are our shepherd, yes. that you will leave the 99 just to find where we are. Lord, we thank you that you found us and we are your children. We thank you for all that you have done this week and all you will continue to do. Lord, may we not have our eyes closed to the things you have done for us each and every week. Do not let our lives, Lord, get in the way of our relationship with you. Lord, we know that you provide everything we need and we are so very grateful. Lord, as we go out to this week, Bring those to us who need to know more about you. Amen. Use us and your word to show them, Lord, that you are the one thing that's missing in their lives. Amen. We thank you for today. Thank we thank you for our lives, our families and friends. Be with each and every one of them. Hear our prayers as we pray in our own quiet times and here at church. And above all, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you. Now. Amen. Go forth and be blessed, church. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Amen. Amen.